Good afternoon. This is Joan McSween and I'm speaking to you from the Winter Garden Library. Today is Thursday, December the 13th, 2012. Sir, may I ask your name? Irv Lipscomb. Good afternoon, Mr. Lipscomb. Good afternoon. May I ask, sir, how it is that you came to live in Winter Garden? Well, my father was a medical technologist. He did uh, blood tests and x-rays and that sort of thing. He was working at a uh, hospital in Eustis, downtown Eustis, when I was a child. And he got the opportunity to come over to Winter Garden to work with Drs. Gleason and Scanlon at a clinic on North Boyd Street. The building is still there. In fact, Dr. Gleason is still living. He's, I think he's over at 100 now. So uh, we moved here in 1949. I was in the sixth grade. Very good. And do you have any early memories of growing up in Winter Garden? Things that you like to do, places that you like to go? Well, of course, uh, we all did as kids. We went around on our bicycles everywhere, you know. It was a much simpler time. The town was small. I think the population was maybe 3,000 when we moved here. Um, there was not much traffic on the streets. It was easy to, drive, to ride your bicycle up and down Plant Street. Uh, the, the drivers all looked out for you and so forth. So it was a really uh, a wonderful place for kids, for white kids, because uh, uh, that was segregation days and I didn't like the way that uh, people of color were treated at that time. However, that is just a fact that we can't overlook. It did happen. Absolutely, absolutely. Is there something in the landscape um, that you remember as a child or now that you miss? Not too much really because uh, Winter Garden was pretty primitive at that time. I think the town is much more attractive and has so much more to offer now than it did then. When you're a child, those things don't matter to you. I remember Hogue's Dime Store, and uh, that was a place to, that when we first moved here, there was only one dime store. Well, we called them dime stores at that time, five and ten sometimes. And uh, so that was a no-miss place when I got my allowance every week. I went to the dime store and bought something. And then we went to the movies that afternoon. Uh, I could say that I missed the theaters. But we've restored one of them, and so, <laughs> and it's doing great, so I'm very pleased about that. Um, I do remember what, in one aspect of the theaters, I've always been a movie buff. My, my brother and I were both movie buffs, and still are. And uh, as we were wandering around town, we thought there was only one theater. That was what was called the Winter Garden Theater at that time. But we found another one on Main Street and the marquee was as clearly a theater, but it was closed. Every once in a while, the doors would be open. So we'd go grab a flashlight and just go in and take a look around. There was never anybody there. I'm not sure why the door was open, but it would be standing wide open. We'd take a flashlight and go in there and look around, and I'd think it was, oh, that's such a shame that that theater isn't open anymore. It was attractive, low budget to be sure, I remember the first three or four rows were just wooden benches without backs. And then they had regular theater seats behind that. Uh, but I w we were always daydreaming that we, we wished that theater would, would reopen. And it was later turned into a, the, the theater was called the Gem Theater, and it was later turned into the Gem Supermarket. And then it became a succession of many, many things since then. But the marquee still boldly stands there on Main Street, and the projection booth still exists, too. And I understand now that you're associated with the Garden Theater, the Restored Garden Theater. Well, it was on the uh, original board that started that. We started that uh, with the Winter Garden Heritage Foundation, and I was on the committee that met for a couple of years to get the ball rolling on that. I mean. We had no idea how much money we were going to have to spend, but we did a lot of research and we got an architect involved. Um, I thankfully had taken a picture of the inside of that theater when I was home from college one summer. My brother was a projectionist there. And so uh, after the theater closed one night, we met down there with the camera and took some pictures. 
So one of them survived, and that was a picture we used to, to focus on the remodeling of the Garden Theater. Uh, later, the uh, Garden Theater Board split from the Winter Garden Heritage Board, uh, a mutual agreement on both sides. So um, I am no longer on the board of the Garden Theater, but I go to as many performances there as I can, and I love the staff, and I love the theater. Well, it is absolutely beautiful. They've done a you've done a wonderful job. No, I, I didn't have much to do with it, but I, I'm very pleased with it. And can you discuss with us then the Heritage Museum, your role with the Heritage Museum? Yes, well, I'm on the board for the Her Winter Garden Heritage Foundation, and we run both the the Heritage Museum and the Railroad Museum. For many years, I was a volunteer host at the Heritage Museum too, and uh, very pleased with what's going on there. It's unbelievable from a town that was not very progressive when I was a kid. The attitude was kind of, well, here we are, take us or leave us, and not much promotion and that sort of thing. Uh, but the, the, the town has done a complete flip-flop from that attitude, and just so many nice things are happening here, and there's a welcoming attitude here, and I know that uh, there are great things planned for the future. So uh, I think it's wonderful that a town like this has done that flip-flop and people are emptying attics and closets and bringing in old pictures and artifacts from the old days. It's unbelievable what we have. The organization is so well run that we are the envy of many other small towns. Uh, and now we're, we're building the, uh, are going to build an addition onto the Heritage Museum that will um, uh, accommodate uh, not only work areas, administrative areas, but a welcome center for the city and a meeting room. And it's going to be very attractive in the same style as the Heritage Museum. So uh, once we get the money in hand, we'll be working on that. I think that will come about in the next couple of years. We also run the Railroad Museum, the Central Florida Railroad Museum, which is a pride and joy of mine. Uh, I'm also a member of the organization that, that uh, founded that museum and continues to have a big hand in the operation of, of it. We're under the umbrella of the Winter Garden Heritage Foundation now, but we are uh, members of our organization, the Central Florida Railroad History Association, uh, still volunteer as hosts there, and we work there at work sessions to keep the place in good shape. It's a labor of love that, that we really enjoy. and. The Railroad Museum is something where we get visitors from all over the world, actually, because people find us on the web, and when they're in Florida, they come by to visit. Could I ask you at this point, what do you think the future holds for Winter Garden? I think the future is just fantastic because we've got a progressive city government, um, a government that's just been of innumerable help to us in um, not only the uh, Garden Theater, but also the Heritage Museum, the Railroad Museum. See, the city bought the uh, building that the Heritage Museum is in, plus the Railroad Museum, plus the theater building. They own all three of those. So whenever there are problems there, uh, maintenance problems, they're on the spot to fix them. Just yesterday, somebody ran a car into the ticket booth of the Garden <laughs> Theater, and uh, the city was right there to get that fixed. And uh, R.C. Stevens Construction was called in, who did the, the uh, 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 restoration of that theater. And I believe it's already fixed up. It's just amazing. Um, so many people that I know that work with museums or theaters in other cities in Central Florida say they just can't believe the cooperation we get here. So I think the city has great plans for, for it. The downtown is, is sparkling now. And uh, repaving of streets, widening of streets. In fact, the street right here is due to be widened and beautified soon. What they've already done to uh, State Road 50 out there, Colonial Drive. Uh, the Winter Garden Village is a tremendous asset to our city, I think. Uh, and the vast expanse of the city limits, especially on the south side of the city. I think we're going to be the envy of um, many small towns in Florida for years to come. I agree. And 
I want to commend you and the, the board of the Heritage Museum, the Heritage Foundation, for the forethought to preserve this for generations, my daughter's generation, my granddaughter's generation. It's a, it's a marvelous endeavor and it's um, something to be very proud of and we thank you. Well, thank you. Thank you for your comments. We, it's a labor of love all the way. Absolutely. <laughs> I can tell. Thank you so much, Mr. Lipscomb. Yes, ma'am. Thank you.